we're getting a much clearer picture now on who Miami's top transfer portal targets are at positions like wide receiver, defensive back, defensive line. You are Locked On Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday. We made it. I'm Alex Dono, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and host of Locked On ACC. Thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked On Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We're free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and it's a huge fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. Folks, we talked a lot the last couple days about Damian Martinez, the top transfer portal running back who I still believe is trending to Miami. He's been Miami's number one focus. Uh, We'll certainly know a lot more next week when he visits the U, but since we've spent so much time on Martinez, I want to spend some time at targets who are emerging at other positions. Also on this episode, we are going to talk a little bit about Mario Cristobal's appearance on the late kick with Josh Pate, where Cristobal, to me, noticeable differences in his demeanor compared to other interviews he's done over the last couple of years, Uh, but I want to start with a transfer portal target at wide receiver who seems to be coming more and more of a priority. And there's a lot of natural fits here for this player. Houston wide receiver Sam Brown is in the portal. Six foot two, 195 pounds, a top two receiver at Houston last year and had a good season. 62 catches, 815 yards and three touchdowns. Now, Sam Brown, one of the reasons why at least Kicking the tires on this player makes a whole lot of sense because he's already got familiarity with your offensive coordinator, having played for Shannon Dawson before. Shannon Dawson was his OC in 2022 at Houston, and yes, that year, Brown was productive. Tank Dell was the guy that year who was the go-to guy setting all the records, but uh, also a good year for Sam Brown that season with 51 catches, 471 yards, four touchdowns that year. I had 62 catches, 815 yards, and three touchdowns this past season in 2023. So Miami is reportedly interested in Sam Brown. So it was an honorable mention, all Big 12 selection last season. Now, my question, and folks, this is not a rhetorical question. Like, this is a serious question that I'm asking. I'm not, you know, trying to slant this one way or another. My question is, is Brown truly the kind of difference maker at receiver that Miami should be looking at? for a position where you're looking for luxury additions. I don't think Miami is shopping for somebody who might be fifth or sixth on the depth chart. I think they're looking for somebody who could be, let's say, top four, right? If not a starter, someone who's going to be a really important rotational guy who plays a lot. So is Brown that kind of a difference maker? Obviously, Shannon Dawson, Mario Cristobal, Kevin Beard, they're more equipped to answer that question than me. And the answer to that might very well be yes. Been reading a lot about this player from Houston sources, Miami sources. In fact, we're we're going to have a clip from Locked On Cougars uh, about you know what kind of a player Sam Brown is in a second. But according to Kane's insight, this is a cool stat. Um, Sam Brown has a verified four four five forty yard dash time, and he's considered to be an NFL prospect for the twenty twenty five draft, or it might be twenty twenty six, but a future NFL draft prospect nonetheless. So. Uh, This is a player in Brown who definitely he's got more experience than a lot of Miami's younger receivers, right? He's got, and you guys know I'm really high on Isaiah Horton the spring he's had, but Brown, he does have more experience and more game time than Horton, more experience than Ray Ray, Robbie Washington. Obviously, he's got more experience than the true freshmen like JoJo and Carr. So perhaps Miami can envision a guy like Brown as someone who can either compete for a starting job, but also provide proven depth on what we refer to as an all-in season. Miami is going all-in this year, trying to win as much as they possibly can, having Cam Ward under center for one season. So you guys tell me if you think Sam Brown is someone who could fit the bill, but uh, I want to go to an awesome clip. And by the way, huge shout out and thank you to Locked On hosts across the network for providing insight 
on players that are leaving their programs in the transfer portal. I've done this for the handful of Miami guys who have entered the portal. So you may see my beautiful face on other people's shows talking about the Jakari Browns and the Henry Parishes and Trevante citizens of the world. And I want to play this clip from Parker Ainsworth, who covers the Houston Cougars on Sam Brown in the transfer portal. Sam Brown shocked a lot of Houston Cougar fans when he entered the transfer portal. I'm the host of Locked On Cougs, Parker Andrews, and man, this one really stings. Sam Brown has been a tremendous impact receiver as a number two and three receiver at his various points across his time at Houston. He also played some at West Virginia before that, but the Big-time receiver, 6'2", 200 pounds, made big, spectacular catches over the middle, deep, crossing route kind of catches at the wide receiver position. Again, as the number two guy for Houston last season, was looking to be the number one guy this fall, went through spring practice with the new staff, and is just looking to make a change to a more pass-happy offense. And, man, in the right offense, this guy could blossom. Now, he's had some off-the-field stuff in the past, got in a fight with the teammate on the sideline, was kind of televised, not the greatest look, but he's very much a matured kid at this point. Trust me on this one, folks. If he signed with your program, you're getting a big-time playmaker, big-time pass catcher for sure. Big-time playmaker, big-time pass catcher for sure. And I, I like what Parker said about how Brown was probably trending to be the number one receiver in Houston this coming season, but wants the change of scenery. I had also heard something about, uh, and I think I think I even saw the clip after it happened about him getting in a fight with a teammate on the sidelines. Obviously, for for whatever competitive energy he has, you want to be able to make sure he harnesses that and controls it. But you know, for somebody who uh, I, I don't know the circumstances of why that fight happened, if that was his fault or the teammate's fault or whatever, but. Obviously, you know, you want to be able to, to harness that competitive rage. And maybe maybe that's something that could be more constructive than anything else if I'm just spitballing on that one. But, yeah, Sam Brown, to me, it's definitely a guy to watch for Miami in the transfer portal. Uh, I don't necessarily think he would walk into the starting lineup here, but it may be something he could compete for and would certainly add a quality depth piece if he does end up becoming a Miami Hurricane. A um, couple of more few more really important transfer portal targets that I want to talk about in this episode of Locked on Canes. Uh, I do think Miami is definitely going to be looking into Michigan State defensive tackle Simeon Barrow. Simeon Barrow, arguably Michigan State's top defensive player, uh, and he's available now at a position where Miami definitely wants to kick the tires on defensive tackles. Uh, you have a connection with Chevis Jackson and Lance Guidry with Marshall cornerback Deani Hill. Being in the transfer portal, this is someone Miami could take a look at. Uh, if I'm looking at cornerbacks, if I could have any transfer portal quarterback uh, cornerback right now, a guy near the top of my list would be Anthony Johnson Jr. from Western Kentucky. I want to talk about him as well. Also, a little bit more insight on Damian Martinez and what kind of a player he is and where Miami stands. So you know what you want to do, my friends? We're only getting started. You want to keep it locked right here on this brand new transfer portal episode of Locked on Canes. Yo, I've been having a blast on Monopoly Go. This mobile app, it feeds my competitive side, guys. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of it, Monopoly Go. My competitive side loves it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. But now I can also heist their vaults for riches for myself. And the leaderboard show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in timed tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or on Google Play. We are also, my friends, brought to you by the awesome folks at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. 
With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Thank you so much for making this Friday episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. Shout out to the everydayers. And if you'd like to take your everydayer experience to the next level, join our Locked on Canes Insiders chat. I include a link in the show description below. When you become a Locked on Canes Insider, you get text messages directly from my phone to yours and vice versa. We can have one-on-ones, questions and answers on there. I give you guys transfer portal scoops, recruiting scoops, practice updates, breaking news. Try it free for 14 days. Click that link below. Try it free. And then if you like it, after two weeks, you can opt in for $4.99 a month. We give you a lot of added value on there on Locked on Canes Insiders. So, um, you know, we have talked uh, in the recent past about defensive tackle C.J. West from Kent State, who Miami has extended an offer to. Uh, Another target that uh, I believe Miami is going after and absolutely should go after is Michigan State defensive tackle Simeon Barrow. There are SEC schools also interested here, including LSU. And for good reason, this is one of the top available players. He was arguably Michigan State's top defensive player overall last season. Honorable mention, all Big Ten player for two straight seasons. Now, with with Simeon Barrow, uh, there's definitely been a trend of indecision. I think this is the fourth time he's been in the transfer portal. So I'm not even sure if it's a slam dunk that he actually leaves Michigan State, but this may the fourth time may be the charm for him. Uh, he's been jumping in and out of the portal every ever since Mel Tucker was fired at, at Michigan State. So this past season, Simeon Barrow started 10 games at defensive tackle, played 469 snaps, heavy workload there, 36 tackles, five and a half tackles for loss, three and a half sacks. So, you know, th- this is a guy that, uh, you know, hopefully wherever he decides to play, I'd love to see him at Miami. He is all in and has a big season because, this is someone who can be a difference maker on the defensive line. So, you know, when we have these conversations about Miami going in for quality, not quantity in the transfer portal, that they're they're going in for starters or impact players. I think Simeon Barrow from Michigan State, who is the guy who checks off all of those boxes. Let's talk about a couple of defensive backs. Marshall cornerback Deani Hill is in the transfer portal. Six foot tall, 172 pounds. He, of course, playing where he's played. He's got a strong connection with Chevis Jackson, who coached him at Marshall. And Lance Gidry was his defensive coordinator there back in 2022. Uh, Hill started nine games last season. And I, I think the one that's most relevant to us, because he did go up against an AC, a good ACC team last year against North Carolina State. Uh, had a good game there. Uh, broke up a pass. Had an interception in that game. 671 snaps played last year for Hill. Coverage grade was a solid 70.9 per pro football focus, had a coverage grade of 78.7 in the game against NC State, Uh, but he's actually an even better tackler than he is coverage guy. Uh, When you can find corners who tackle like him, it's always a bonus. His tackling grade was an elite 84.1 PFF grade last year. His grade overall against the run was 84.6. He had 55 tackles, which is a lot for a starting cornerback. Uh, But I'll tell you, someone that. that I, I like uh, even more than Hill from Marshall, who I do like, but Anthony Johnson Jr. from Western Kentucky. Uh, this is a guy, you know, Miami is reportedly interested in, who I hope they make a priority. Five foot 10, 180 pounds, but this is a dude coming from the Hilltoppers, is absolutely ready to make a move into the Power Four. He was the fourth highest graded cornerback in the entire country last season, according to PFF, with an elite. overall grade. His coverage grade was 90.6. I mean, that's, I I don't care what conference you play in. That's really good. Four interceptions last year, five pass breakups, a blocked punt, 650 snaps played. He appeared in 10 games with nine starts. And most importantly about Anthony Johnson Jr., uh, this is something that could potentially play in Miami's favor. Um, He played his high school ball, grew up down here, Monsignor Pace in Miami, New Orleans. So, He's a South Floridian. Maybe he decides coming back home for a Miami team that seems to be on the rise would not be a terrible decision. Uh, So, you know, I I don't think there's a whole lot new 
going on with Miami's top transfer portal target, top running back in the portal, Damian Martinez. Uh, he he did uh, take in an Arizona spring practice yesterday. Uh, Miami still believed to be the front runners for Martinez. Had the in-home visit with Matt Merritt, the running backs coach, in a Miami contingent uh, a couple nights ago. Um, he is going to be visiting Miami later on this month, April 25th, I believe. is 26, I think, is going to be the start date for that visit. Uh, Hurricanes are believed to be running in front. However, you have to watch out for the other teams he's visiting, including Arizona, Mississippi State, and Kentucky. Uh, so hopefully Miami continues to run out in front for Damian Martinez. 1,185 yards this past season, nine rushing touchdowns, excels after contact. This is a true featured running back, folks. And for more on Damian Martinez, the host of Locked On College Football, Spencer McLaughlin, who was a big Pac-12 guy. So he knows what Damian Martinez can do. Here's Spencer breaking him down. Oregon State running back Damian Martinez is one of the best running backs that will enter the transfer portal in this cycle. Spencer McLaughlin here of Locked On College Football. Martinez last year was a standout at Oregon State. A thousand yard rusher, had an outstanding true freshman campaign as well. Was a highly touted recruit originally out of the state of Texas. Made his way up to Oregon State. Originally said he was going to stick it out with the Beavs amidst their de facto relegation in conference realignment to the Mountain West but has decided to enter the transfer portal. Now, he was reportedly going to make $400,000 in NIL at Oregon State, so that offer likely will have to be up for whichever team lands him, but whoever does get him gets a big physical runner, a one-cut downhill back who is an all-conference player. And whoever does get him, we hope it's the U. Feedback that we've gotten from his in-home visit with Miami a couple of nights ago, all positives, uh, trying to win over the family as well. Martinez and his mother will be on the visit to Miami later this month. It's going to be a three- or four-day visit down in Miami, and hopefully that's when Miami can can try to close the deal. Again, I, folks, I do not take victory laps until it's done. It ain't over till it's over, but for right now, I like the way that things are trending with Damian Martinez, and he could be that featured physical back that Miami needs to – really be I don't care if he's one two probably one but the one two punch with Mark Fletcher once Fletcher is fully ready to go Miami's backfield if you can have both of those guys in it what a luxury and Miami's backfield would be the envy of America quite frankly if you can get Damian Martinez here to join Mark Fletcher and the other cast of characters I'm not sleeping on the other guys as well Chris Johnson Jr., I love the spring he had. Chris Wheatley Humphrey had a good spring. Uh, Jordan Lyle is going to be a factor once he arrives on campus. He's going to be enrolling this June. A.J. Allen coming back from injury. There's going to be a lot to like about Miami's backfield, especially if you can land Damian Martinez. Uh, I, I noticed um, Mario Cristobal, he, he made me want to run through a brick wall when he was on Thursday night with Josh Pate on the late kick. I want to give you some of my takeaways from that conversation and why Cristobal is, I mean, I hope he can do it. He's making it his life's mission to try to bring the U back to prominence. Also, folks, we're going to have some exci exciting things coming up on another episode later on today. I want to tell you guys what you're going to have to tune in for because uh, our friends at Kane's Connection, Miami's official NIL collective, uh, we partnered with them. They're helping us get amazing interviews with student athletes. We're going to have some of those coming up later on today. So, folks, you want to keep it locked right here. We're not done yet on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. And I'm certainly not done with game time because I'm getting these amazing deals with last minute tickets. Game time, it's the only ticket app that I use. It's now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. Killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee make Game Time take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. The all in pricing is so important. I've used Game Time more than a dozen times at this point, and they don't slap you with those hidden fees at the end. You see right away exactly what you're going to pay, which is just such an advantage. There's no bait and switch with the way that they do this. The views from your seat are also a game changer because especially when you're buying tickets for concerts, like sometimes you're not exact. What's my angle from the stage going to be? You know exactly what's going to what it's going to be with game time. 
Again, the deals get better the closer you get to an event, which means procrastinators like myself actually live in a world where we get rewarded for that. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you so much for making this Friday episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. So, folks, um, we started doing this last week since we've been uh, partnered with Canes Connection, who are helping us get awesome interviews. Later on today, late afternoon, evening, we're going to be talking here on Locked on Canes with, looks like we're going to be talking with Elijah Alston, who's someone who... uh, trending towards being a starting edge rusher for Miami this year, transfer out of Marshall. Uh, we are going to be talking with Armando Blunt, who I cannot wait to see that. You talk about defensive lineman Armando, who's just coming in in this class of 2024, is going to be one for the future, if not an impact guy this year. And I know he's chomping at the bit to make an impact this year, so I cannot wait uh, to see him get out there and make uh, make a difference this season. We may have one more in the works for later today as well, so I will keep you guys updated on that, but we're going to be interviewing a handful of players later on today on Locked on Canes, and I can't thank Canes Connection enough. And if you've been thinking about getting involved in these NIL efforts for Miami, if you've been thinking about signing up at canesconnection.com, make sure you do it with our code LOCKED. That's our promo code, LOCKED. When you use our promo code, LOCKED, they're going to give you 20% off your first month at any membership tier. So make sure you keep that in mind when you sign up. I was watching Mario Cristobal last night on the late kick. And, uh, you know, I I appreciate, I would consider Josh Pate, who's national college football guy, you know, covers every team. But I appreciate him becoming a friend of the Miami program. And I don't mean it in a way where he's, like, biased towards Miami or, like, giving us this con. Like, I I just appreciate because some of the national guys feel like they have an axe to grind against Miami and don't give Miami fair coverage. Pate, he gives Miami more than fair coverage. And I I appreciate the way he's always open and receptive uh, to the Hurricanes and, you know, doesn't doesn't act like Miami is some, I don't know, some second tier program the way that, you know, certain national people do. I appreciate that about Pate. And you guys tell me if you had the same takeaway watching Cristobal. Uh, his demeanor to me, when you compare it to, because he's done a handful of national interviews with Pate, with uh, J.D. Piquel at, at on three, and I, I feel like Cristobal seems to be in a better place of satisfaction with Miami's culture and the quality of Miami's roster. He seems to be in a better place with that now than he has at any point the last couple of years, which is, from where I sit, he seems satisfied with the continuing progress it's not a finished job yet believe me uh but mario cristobal seems more satisfied now than he's been the last couple years he said quote the momentum within the walls of this building could not be stronger he said and he was being interviewed uh, inside this indoor practice facility the momentum could not be stronger he says uh you know cristobal he mentions being confident about transfer portal season adding in his words a couple of, of important pieces you know, a couple few, I think, you know, my estimate has been Miami's probably going to come away with somewhere between four to six transfers. And I, I don't think they're going to, you know, give out scholarships just for the sake of it. I I think when you talk about looking at players like Damian Martinez, you know, looking at a player like Anthony Johnson Jr. or looking at a player like, uh, like the defensive tackle out of Michigan State, Simeon Barrow, looking at these are quality additions, Sam Brown, if you can get them. So these guys aren't Jags. These guys can be difference makers with your program. Cristobal seems pretty confident in the early stages of transfer portal season. A couple of other things he said uh, that that I, I found interesting. Um, he, This is how important it is to Mario, right? There, there's no guarantee he accomplishes this, but this is how important it is to Mario to bring Miami back to those glory days that he played in. He was on multiple national championship teams, late 80s, early 90s. At Miami, he said, quote, 
I just could not go to the grave without getting my, without getting back to Miami and being a part of making Miami what it should always be. That's what we've been working on relentlessly, he said. Uh, I like a story that he told about alumni weekend last week. He had a lot of former players. You know, some of these I had a chance to see uh, last weekend uh, with the alumni coming down for the final spring practice, the spring football game last week. Michael Irvin was among those, and and the playmaker talked to Miami's current players, and he talked about how much harder in his day we want to get Miami back to this. The practices on Green Tree were tougher than the games. We know it. We believe it. It was absolutely true in Irvin's day. I mean, we've heard these stories about how, you know, my, my, some of Miami's explosive offenses back then couldn't score on the defense in practice. Couldn't score on their own defense. They go out there on Saturdays, they'd score 40, 50 points against opponents. Like the practices back then were harder than the games. And and Irvin told his player, told Miami's current players, quote, if you're not about winning, you can't be my friend. He said, <laughs> I mean, I love that. So uh, hopefully we keep trending onwards and upwards. But, you know, Cristobal also did note all this excitement and this enthusiasm. We haven't played a game yet in 2024. So. Just so, you know, the rival fans who come in here, if you're looking for bulletin board material, Mario's not making any proclamations. He's not making any record predictions for next year. He just seems to be somewhat satisfied, very satisfied with the way that his roster, his coaching staff, and the overall culture is trending that, you know, Miami is in, seems to be in a better place now, certainly, than it was a couple of years ago. How much better? We're going to find that out starting August 31st. Thank you guys so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. Again, be on the lookout for Miami Hurricanes players joining us on the show later on today. Uh, We're going to be recapping whatever happened in spring. Uh, I I was there able to watch portions of most every practice, you know, not every single thing. So I'd like to get the words of the players talking about that and what they're expecting heading into this upcoming 2024 season. So we will talk to you guys again later on today with some Miami Hurricanes players right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.